Good. Welcome to all of you who are online live and to all of you who are at home. And uh, I just want to uh, let's let's begin tonight's chat. Uh, and these are going to be uh, this is going to be, like I said, recorded. If you have a body, you are an athlete. I think that's a great place to start. Bill Bowerman, you are all athletes. You have a body. There you go. Uh, this is me, the book I wrote anyway. OK, so tonight's chat. Um, I do want to just reiterate uh, 40 to 60 grams of carbs per hour. Some of you can get as little as like less than 20, 30, depending on how you've been training your body to use carbs during these training runs. During training, I think it's best to take in the fewest volume of carbs you can and run at low heart rate for the longer runs because you're training your body to utilize fat at lower heart rate. Fat is by far the larger reservoir for fuel that your body uses. So let's train fat, low heart rate, and uh, don't take in carbs as much as you can. Obviously, you want to finish your workout. You use carbs even sitting down at low heart rate, but you use way more carbs as your heart rate goes higher and higher and higher. So see if you can't use less carbs during the low training run, yeah. training our body to use carbs. Obviously, you're intaking carbs. You're then taking training your body to use carbs. Um, I do, before we get any farther, want to thank the Ellie Roadrunners and Volvo and ASICs for, whoops, there, where is my ASICs thing? Anyway, and ASICs for uh, sponsoring the LA Roadrunners and uh, away we go. You are about to have, after Sunday, a three-week taper where you will increase 0.5% to 6% increase of energy output. Uh, the average person, this is race day, the average person increases their uh, energy output during the three weeks of taper by 3%. We'll talk about that next. Um, we're gonna talk about how much sodium do you need and what is the value of protein? Um, during the, this is sodium during your race and protein actually during your race. Those are the quickie things we're going to talk about tonight. And so here's the chart. This is the reason that you want to start taper and you don't want to leave it to like one week of taper. Um, everyone gains fitness. You'll note this straight line up here is fitness. And then the dotted line is just volume of low heart rate. And then this dotted line, the really small dotted line right here is just intensity. We're talking about higher heart rate, intensity work, that kind of thing. So as your volume declines and your high intensity work declines, you'll note your fitness, this solid line at the top here, continues to increase. And that's during, obviously, everything else is tapering, and yet you still are increasing up to a point beyond where your taper begins. Your taper begins over here. You're still increasing till race day. You'll notice you peak right there, and then race day, you're, you're actually increasing your fitness levels. So Taper may be one of the most important periods of the entire season. So don't screw up your taper by saying, oh, I'll do one more or two more weeks of build because I can get better. No, 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 no. Be careful. You may lose out on an average person as much as 3% increase from doing less. Got it? The average, like I said, that's the average you can you can gain 0.5% to 6%. 6% is huge. 3% is pretty big for that short a period of time. Also, group zero through four actually have a two and a half week taper on your schedule. At schedule five, um, you have a two and a half week taper. But still, it takes about 10 to 14 days for an exercise regimen to actually impact your fitness, impact your physiology. So really two weeks before the race, anything you do, you do a 20 mile run like a week and a half before the race, it probably won't help you until after the race. 
So what good is that? You know, everyone benefits from a minimum of two weeks of taper. So there you have, there you have that. That's taper. Protein. Why the heck would anyone take in protein? Somebody actually asked me this last week and I really wasn't thinking about it. It's not something I focus on almost ever, but I, I kind of looked it up. Um, there are some, and I actually heard a lecture on it from a, a guy who is kind of one of those people that I go to, a um, guy named Bob Sibahar, former Olympic nutritionist for the triathlon team, US, US Olympic triathlon team a couple of years. So a couple of, Olympics ago. At any rate, um, protein improves, and there is actually some amino acids. Amino acids make up protein. There are several amino acids that you need. We're not really sure if we know all of the amino acids, which is one of the reasons it's good to eat actual real food, but we do know a lot of the amino acids that make up protein. And goo actually has about 450 milligrams of amino acids in it, which make up protein. So that you'll be able to get on the course if you take in, you know, goo from the course. It'll be, I want to say it's like mile 12 and 18. We have goo gels um, handed out on the course. People will hand them out to you as long as you're not running so fast and you miss grabbing one. Um, so you may want to definitely take gels yourself. But in terms of protein, we already talked about carbs in a former lecture. I won't go into that again. But it does improve like mental clarity, um, protein. You do need mental a protein for mental function. Um, it makes you feel full or fuller. You know, if you're if you're during taper, by the way, if you're not getting enough protein, you need all three macronutrients or you're going to feel hungry. You need carbs, protein and fats. And if you're not getting in enough of any one of those, you're going to feel hungry. So protein also does make you feel fuller if you get it in during the race. That's part one reason why you benefit from the amino acids and goo. Um, it's it does that feeling uh, gives you the feeling of having more energy, but um, I must tell you, protein is probably the worst resource for fuel. When you're burning up protein, you're really really slow. You're hitting the wall. You've hit the wall probably. You're going really slow. You're burning up. You're you're cannibalizing muscle tissue for for protein. Your body will do that. It'll take protein from your muscles by eating them up. Essentially, it is a really bad resource for fuel. It is only when you're in just in a horrible place and you're not going to be able to go very fast. So you don't really want to count on protein for, for fuel as a resource for fuel, unless you're just, you know, in the wilderness dying out there. Um, now, the question is, is does it rebuild muscles while running? That is a claim that some products make. I don't know a lot of real science behind this. It would make sense. Your muscles are essentially nearly 100% protein. So rebuilding muscles while you run, is that really going to be a huge value while you're on a half marathon or a marathon even? Mm, yeah, I'm not so sure. I haven't seen science on how fast we rebuild muscles by ingesting protein while breaking up more and more muscles while running. So I, I'm really not sure about that one. It is a claim some products make. Um, and like I said, goo has 450 milligrams of amino acids and amino acids make up protein. So that's protein, the good and the whatever of proteins. Um, I don't really worry too much about taking in a lot of protein. Like I said, you know, it is in a lot of these gels, amino acids are, um, it's in a lot of drinks, amino acids, uh, so you kind of get it. Uh, I'm not sure how much. I've never seen any science on how much you need to take in, except there have been claims uh, four parts uh, carbohydrate to one part protein is considered by some products a valuable uh, a, a balance. 
four parts carbohydrate to one part protein. Um, I don't know. That is a claim that some products make. Again, I'm not sure about the validity of that, but um, take a look at the products you're using. I'm not convinced that huge, definitely not huge volumes of protein. You don't want that. Um, anyway, um, so sodium. This is kind of the big topic of the night, although this is kind of a short one, really. Um, and I will take questions about this um, or anything, really. Um, we have a lot of great questions every week. Um, there is a claim by a lot of people. Um, and there is some science to suggest this is true. If you drink too much, you flush minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium, all those electrolytes. Electrolytes are the minerals that your body uses for neurological function. You also use sodium to absorb hydration. If you're running low on sodium, your ability to absorb hydration to begin with is being depleted. Okay, so if you drink too much, here's the balance. Here's how that balance works. Uh, prime example, if you drink too much, you're flushing minerals out of your system, that meaning electrolytes. And if you're flushing too much sodium out of your system and electrolyte sodium, then suddenly you, can, you, can't, you can't absorb a lot of that hydration you're taking in. So, Instead of de allowing yourself to dehydrate because you're afraid of taking in too much liquid, you know, it's not just water, it's any liquid, you know, liquid has water in it, right? So it, it, it's your um, electrolyte drink, it's water, it's whatever you're carrying with you. Um, all of those things are, have, have, are, are liquid, have water in them. So if you drink too much of anything, yes, you are flushing minerals out of your system. My argument is don't worry about drinking too much because then you may become dehydrated. And if you become dehydrated, your energy levels are going to plummet by, you know, very little dehydration, like two, three percent. I've heard a lot of different uh, arguments or discussion on the percentage but you can lose 10% energy output by just dropping your hydration like two, 3%, something in that ballpark. So you don't wanna become dehydrated. You don't wanna become mineral depleted by drinking too much. So the answer is take in minerals, take in sodium. Goo has 60 milligrams of sodium. Now, the American College of Sports Medicine, and this seems to be a bit high, and it could actually be low on a hot day if we go up into the 80s or even in the 90s, you're sweating more. Um, all individuals have different sweat rates. We have different losses of sodium. If you're getting a lot of salt around your face, what feels like sand around your face or white streaks on your shirt, your you know, under your under your arms kind of thing, on your chest, uh, you, you may be a high sweater, you're losing a lot of sodium, that white stuff is sodium. Um, you may need more, the high end of, you know, 300 to 600, that's a huge range. And that even seems a little high to me. But um, obviously, if you're a heavy sweater, if you're sweating heavily as a person, um, you may need uh, uh, more on the high end of that. If it's hot day, you may need toward the high end of that 360 milligrams. Now you're only getting in about 60 milligrams in goo. Um, electrolyte does have a fair volume of, it doesn't have, a, excuse me, it does not have a huge volume of sodium. It may be around the same as much as goo. Um, it does have a lot of potassium and other electrolytes, which is the gem of electrolyte. But there again, on a hot day, you, know, you may be taking in 100 milligrams of sodium per hour if you're only doing one gel and a, and a, and a couple cups of, you know, each one of those white eight ounce cups 
usually the, the, uh, the, the volunteers fill it to about half full. So you're getting about four ounces of electrolyte, which you know may have about the same amount as a, a gel of good uh, in terms of sodium intake. Um, so you're still going to need more, more sodium intake, right, per hour, especially if it's a hot day. Um, my suggestion, what I do is I do take mineral pills. Here's salt stick. Um, I also use Hammer Nutrition's Enduralites. Um, salt stick pills, these are just normal little tiny pills. I don't know if we can really see me. I'll, I'll show you a pill later when I turn off the PowerPoint thing, but there's a little pill. That's a salt stick pill. It's uh, all minerals, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, um, all those little electrolytes uh, in one little capsule. And yes, on a hot day, especially when I'm doing a marathon, I look like a drug addict running down the street popping mineral pills. So uh, yes, they're mineral pills only, and they have no other chemicals in them, but you know, I probably look like some kind of drug addict. What is he doing? But regardless, um, take, uh, take that into account. Uh, like I said, if you're not a heavy sweater and it's a cold day, you, you might actually do well just with taking in gels like every 45 minutes to an hour, taking in Enduralite, uh, excuse me, um, taking in electrolyte drink, you know, almost every table. Um, and electrolyte again will be on almost, it will be on every water table on the LA Marathon course. I believe there are going to be like 24 water tables. And then, of course, the finish line would be 25. Um, around mile one, it seems like they're skipping a water table. It's just a little too early, I guess. I'm not sure. At any rate, um, so uh, like I said, oh, salt stick has 215. That's actually milligrams. So that and a gel would pretty much put you in the ballpark for what the American College of Sports Medicine recommends for, for one hour. One pill, an hour with one gel and a little endure, and, and, and electrolyte, and you're pretty much at, at you know where you wanna be for 300 milligrams per hour. Hot day, you may wanna do salt stick uh, every 20 minute on the hour, every 40 minute on the hour, and then your goo and, and endurolit uh, on the hour. Did that make sense? So every 20 minutes, you're taking a source of sodium. If it's going up to like 80, 90 degrees, that's 80, 90 degrees, got it? Every 20 minutes, taking some source of sodium be it a pill or a gel or a, you know electrolyte drink with the gel. When you take in gels, by the way, you do want to drink. Um, I usually, when I see a water table and I realize it's time to take in a gel, or I should say I wait till I see a water table, I'll rip the gel open, I'll start consuming the gel slowly, then I'll grab a cup of water, pinch the cup of water. So it, there's a little V for kind of a funnel into my mouth and I'll down the, the thing of water and kind of swallow the gel with the water. So, or the, the last of the gel with the water. And with that, train smart and train to win because if you don't, you won't. And if you do, you just might. I will see you all at the finish line. And thank you all for listening to that. I will now take questions. Stop sharing that thing. And uh, does anybody have any questions about anything, uh, especially what I just talked about? I know that the sodium intake thing is really, really a broad range. And um, especially it, it worsens on a hot day, like I said. So that would that would really take you to more of the high end on a hot day. Um, any questions about any of that? And, and thank you all. I see we have 28 people online. I, I appreciate all of you being here. Any other questions about any of that or uh, questions about anything? Questions on all that going once, twice, going three times. Any questions about anything? And in a minute, I'll talk about Saturday and the rainstorm and all of that. But because um, we've been watching the weather reports, 
Um, it looks like rain, but I'll, I'll get into that in, in a little bit. Anybody, any more questions? Okay, let me talk about Saturday really quick. Um, it looks like it's going to be raining uh, heavily tomorrow. It looks like, well, right now it's it's been extended. It was supposed to stop on noon on Sunday, which meant kind of not heavy, heavy rain Sunday morning. Um, but now it seems to be getting extended. So we're going to watch our weather report. Um, we're going to have a plan B because there might be flooding in the tunnel going under PCH, which we were going to take, and flooding in the alleyway going all the way out to the jetty. So we may go down Pacific to the jetty, which is the street next to the alleyway that we normally take, for part of it at least. Um, so we're watching all that. Tomorrow, late day, I'm going to be like driving down to the tunnel, taking a look to see if it's flooded, driving down the alleyway to see if that's flooded. So I'm going to post some stuff um, Friday night, tomorrow night on our Facebook site. And also I'll be emailing all of our PACE leaders so they'll know what's going on. Um, but dress warm. It's going to be 45 to 50 degrees out there, 52 degrees by the time some of you are done. Um, dress warm out there um, because it's going to be cold and there will definitely be some rain. Dress with layers uh, just so if it soaks through, you'll stay warm. Doesn't matter if you get wet. We all take showers. We swim. We're good with wet. We're just not good with cold. Um, and if you do get cold, if you start shivering, um, let me pick you up. We'll throw you in your car we'll, and we'll, we'll, you can turn the heat on, go home, jump in the shower. Water is the best um, conductor of temperature, be it heat or cold. If you want to heat up your body, just jump in the shower or even better, a hot bathtub water um, will really heat your body up. If you're shivering, um, you have hypothermia. That's what it is. That's the technical term. Your your body temperature is is down a little bit, and you want to get your 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 body temperature up a little bit. Um, there's a balance to everything. You don't want to be too hot from fever. You don't want to be too cold from being outside and exposed to cold temperatures either. So there is that. Uh, does anybody have any other questions about anything? Going once. Going twice. Um, hi there. Uh, can you hear me okay? <laughs> hi. <laughs> so um, um, thank you for um, the lecture. So I just wonder, like, because I noticed that you're recording the session, uh, is there a place that I can uh, find those recordings from before? Yeah. A as a matter of fact, if you join our Facebook, LA Roadrunners dash Facebook page, uh, that's, excuse me, LA Roadrunners dash group page, LA Roadrunners dash group page. Um, you can see a ton of videos that the links to the videos are there, but they're actually, they reside. The real video is on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search for LA Roadrunners and go to our newest round navy blue uh, circle with uh, the new, this logo on it. And um, that's our newest channel with with a ton it's got about over a dozen lectures on it as a matter of fact i'm about to post a link from one of the lectures that we did a year ago on 23 minutes on the first six miles of the la marathon if you want to get involved in the first six miles of the la marathon which i think are the most critical element of the portion of the la marathon um, you'll see a link probably tonight or tomorrow on um, the first six miles of the LA Marathon. It's already recorded, I just need to post the link. Um, and I have two other videos on pacing the LA Marathon as well, which are, are worth taking a look at. And I'll post links on our Facebook site to those, which are also up on our YouTube site. I'll post those links uh, in the next few days or next two weeks to come. But, um, oh, George, thank you for the lecture. You are welcome, George. Um, but yeah, you can you can see links on our Facebook uh, page or uh, just go straight to the source uh, YouTube. Got it. 
Thank you. YouTube channel. You're very welcome. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff. Like this one will be there as of tonight, as soon as I've done down recording it, downloading it. Um, you name it. Um, any other questions? That was certainly a good one. And any other questions from anybody? Questions going once. This may be a short night. Questions going twice. Questions going three times. Okie doke. I thank all of you. I'll stay online. If anybody has any personal questions, injury, aches, pains, let me know. Um, I'll stay online. But to those of you who are watching for the information I was going to talk about tonight, uh, thank you for watching. And for those of you at home watching the replay, uh, thank you for, for watching the replay. And with that, I'll stay online live. But um, thank you all, and uh, I'm going to turn off the recording. And good night for those watching at home, uh, for those watching the recording.